Next thing to talk about is interface speed and duplex. They are set to auto by default. So both sides of the link should auto negotiate to full duplex and the fastest available speed. They should do that automatically. The default is auto on Cisco devices. Best practice is to manually set the speed and duplex on ports which are connected to another network infrastructure device, such as a router, a switch, or a firewall, or a server. Because if you set it manually, that is just a little bit more reliable. To be honest though, auto should work just fine as well. In a normal building, you'll maybe have hundreds or even thousands of PCs, so you're not going to manually configure the speed and duplex for all of those, but you'll have less amount of network infrastructure devices and servers, and best practice is to manually set the speed and duplex on there. It's very important to set matching speed and duplex settings on both sides of the link. So either leave both sides set as auto or set both sides manually. Do not have one side at auto and the other side set manually. So for example, if you've got a server plugged into the switch, you could go onto the switch and you could manually set the speed and duplex on there. If you're not sure how to do it on the server, maybe you would just leave it on the server to auto. That would be a big mistake, okay? You either have to set it to manual on both sides or auto on both sides. If you set it to manual on one side and auto on the other, then that will often cause speed and duplex issues, which can bring the link down or lead to terrible performance on the link. So always do it the same on both sides, important. Okay, let's have a look at the commands to do that. So at the interface level, duplex is either full or half, and then speed is the speed of the interface. So let's do that on the lab again. So I'm already in the interface configuration on my switch. I will set duplex full, and this is a fast ethernet link, so I'll set it to speed 100. And notice when I do that, it will bring the interface down and then it will bring it back up again. So right now I haven't configured this on the router, so it's auto on one side and manual on the other. I don't want that, so I will go onto the router and it's already in the interface configuration as well. And I'll also set speed 100 and duplex full on this side as well. Okay, back to the slides. And that was all the things we want to do for our initial configuration. After we've done that, we want to verify that everything is working as expected. First command here is a show running config. That will show the entire configuration on the switch. So very, very common to use this command either just to see what's happening on a switch or for troubleshooting later. So I'll go back to the enable prompt because it's a show command and I can enter just a shortened version show run and it will print out the entire running configuration on this switch for me. And I can hit the space bar to scroll down a page at a time. If I want to break out, I can hit control C. Okay, so that was a show run. The next command on the slide was show IP interface brief. Between show run and show IP interface brief, these are the two most common commands that you will run on a router or a switch. If you're working as a professional network engineer, it's typical that you will run both those commands multiple times every day. So show run shows the entire configuration. Show IP interface brief shows you the status of your interfaces and which IP address is configured on which interface. So again, if you jump on a router or a switch and you're gathering information about it, this is a very, very common command to use. I can see in the example here that interface fast ethernet zero slash zero has got IP address 192.168.0.1 on there and the status is up and the protocol is up. Interface fast ethernet zero slash one is administratively down, which means I have not done a no shutdown on that interface. Okay, so that was on the router. I can also do this command, the same command on the switch as well. So a show IP interface brief, 
I'm going to get a longer output here because it's on a switch now. There's more interfaces on there. Again, it's exactly the same output. I can see all of my interfaces that are on the device. IP addresses that are configured on those interfaces. This is a switch, layer two switch, so it's just got the VLAN one interface right now with an IP address on there. And I can also see the status of my interfaces. Next verification command, I can do a show run interface VLAN one. So on the switch again, if I do a show run, it shows the entire configuration. This can be really long. So if you want to just check the configuration for a particular interface, you can do a show run interface. So for example, interface fast ethernet zero slash one, you see it there as I'm scrolling through the show run config to get straight to it. I could do a show run interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and it just shows me that part of the configuration. Okay, so that's a show run interface, shows you the configuration you've manually configured on the interface. If you do a show interface, fast ethernet zero slash one, that will show you the MAC address on the interface, the IP address on interfaces if one is configured, and it also shows you traffic statistics as well. So if you think there's maybe an issue with an interface, this is a useful command for troubleshooting that. It also will verify if traffic is passing through the interface or not as well. Like you see in the example here, we've had 571 packets output and 97 packets input, so traffic is going through that interface. This command will also show you if you have any errors on the interface as well. So right now we've got zero input errors and zero output errors, so that is all good. Okay, and the last command to show you here is a show version. That will show you the version of iOS, the operating system that is running on this switch or the router. So I'll do a show version and I can see this is the version of iOS that is running on the switch. It will also give me some additional information in there as well, like how much memory is installed in the device. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.